Alrighty. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, today I am going to talk to you about um, word to vec um, which is a machine learning model used in natural language processing that's been gaining some traction in the last few years. Um, it's a really interesting technique and produces a lot of really surprising results in terms of like language understanding. So um, I'd like to share it with you. Um, so first, what is it? Um, it's a supervised machine learning technique um, originally developed by a team at Google led by Tomasz Mikulov. Um, you start with a very high dimension vector space, um, usually several hundred dimensions, and um, you train word to vec on a large data set, um, like a very large corpus of words. Um, word to vec then will encode each unique uh, word in that corpus as a um, vector in that high dimensional space. Um, so, uh, and yeah, so those vectors are called word embeddings. Um, uh, and as an example, um, here's a simplified representation of what this would look like um, flattened to two dimensions. Um, each point on this graph um, represents a vector, uh, which in turn represents either the name of a country or a city. Um, and you'll notice from this graph that um, if word to vec is trained well, um, the vectors will form clusters based on their meanings. So um, in this case, um, all of the countries are on the left side and all of the cities are clustered on the right side, um, which if uh, you recall um, is a neural network. So yeah. Um, here's just another visualization just to show you what um, a like 2D representation would look like with just more data. Um, again, I don't know if you can see here, but the words are clustered um, by um, meaning. So that's all well and good, but what does that actually tell us? Um, what can we do with this information? Um, well, so traditional natural language processing techniques um, treat words as discrete units, um, but with word to vec uh, one of the valuable features is that it can actually describe relationships between words um, because it is encoding words as vectors. Um, so the fact that the model treats the words as vectors also means that you can perform mathematical operations on them. Um, if you, sub you can subtract words and add them together to um, find a third word. Um, and by doing this, you can uncover some really interesting relationships, um, which uh, we'll cover shortly. Um, but uh, the real power of word to vec is that it can um, detect multiple degrees of similarity between words. Um, it doesn't just detect uh, similarities and meanings or relationship between words, but it can also um, detect differences in syntax, um, or yeah, uh, like the, the word endings, um, grammatical inflections, and so on. Um, so yeah, let's go into some examples. Um, here's the first one. Um, word to vec can detect similarities um, between words. Um, so say um, we want to find words that are similar to San Francisco. Um, word to vec will calculate the cosine similarity between the vectors, uh, which is uh, just like the cosine of the angle between two vectors. Um, the cosine similarity of um, very similar words is one, um, not similar at all words is zero. Um, and logically enough, the most uh, correlated words are the ones that have um, a higher cosine similarity. Um, you'll notice that the more similar ones are um, words related to California or the Bay Area, um, while other big cities in the US are lower in the list and um, semantically and conceptually they are also just like less similar to um, the input. Um, so the vectors produced by word to vector are also embedded with information about word relationships. Um, so as an example, uh, let's subtract the vector for Russia from the vector for Moscow and add the difference to the vector for Italy um, and see what we get. And to do that, let's return to that um, chart I showed you at the beginning. Um, the, uh, we subtract the vector from, uh, of Russia from the vector representing Moscow. Um, the difference is shown here in red. Um, let's add the vector to Italy. And um, here's the result. Um, as you can see, the closest vector to the sum is Rome, which surprisingly enough is the capital of Italy. Um, you'll notice that uh, this relationship isn't really clear cut for all of them, but um, it's, it's pretty cool that it can actually detect that relationship at all just by um, doing mathematical operations on um, those word embeddings. Okay, so let's see how, of an example of how um, word to vec can detect syntactic patterns. Um, it's really well suited to processing analogies. So let's say we feed it the first three words of the following analogy, walked is to walking as swam is to 
something, um, the result is swimming. Uh, so this is a simple visualization of what that might look like in the vector space. Um, something that I really like about this diagram is that um, it really highlights that the difference between walked and walking is similar to the difference between swam and swimming, um, which is parallel to the like difference in their grammars. Um, finally, here, another surprising example is that um, if you subtract the vector for man from the vector for king and add woman, you get queen, um, which conceptually is you know, a king that's a woman. Um, so in the time remaining, let's talk about um, implementation. Um, to produce these representations, um, word to vec generally uses either the uh, one of two architectures, either the continuous bag of words model or the um, skip gram model. Um, the word contexts matter a lot in training um, word to vec. Um, in context, in this case, meaning the words that um, surround the target word. So, like in the the example, big brown dog, um, the context of brown would be big and dog. Um, so, the continuous bag of words model um, uses uh, uses context to pre predict a target word. Um, the skip gram model does the opposite. Uses um, uh, it predicts the target context based on a single word. Um, the skip gram uh, the skip gram model um, is more um, well suited to large data sets, um, but it's more computationally correct and takes longer. Um, so um, the quality of the um, vectors that word to vec produces um, basically varies by how well you train it. Um, the uh, size of the vectors need to be sufficiently large, um, usually hundreds of dimensions. Um, this makes sense because if you have a vector with 500 dimensions, it can encode more data than just a three-dimensional one. Um, but not only do you need large vectors, you also need large data sets, um, often to the scale of billions of words. Um, the training data also needs to be high quality. Um, the team at Google that originally developed the model trained it on a huge data set of just analogies, um, which are very um, good for word to vec because it's all about like relationships between words. Um, and then finally, the quality of the training algorithm you use is um, important in getting high quality vectors, um, that makes sense. You want it to be well trained. Um, so um, the last thing I'd like to show you is um, data from an actual implementation of word to vec um, This is from the organization Deep Learning 4J. Um, they trained their model on um, the Google News corpus, and um, a lot of really fun examples have come out of that. Um, so how, the, how it works, again, is that they fed the model like three, the first three words of an analogy and their model returned an, um, an array of words that are most likely candidates for finishing that um, relationship. So just as a roof is the top of a house, you have dome, bell tower, spire, et cetera, at the top of castles. Um, that relationship makes sense. Um, Donald Trump is too Republican as Barack Obama is to either Democratic, GOP, Democrats, or McCain. Um, this seems a little weird because why would Barack Obama be similar to the GOP? But then you think, and like a lot of people actually considered Donald Trump to be like opposite of what Republicans actually stand for. So the the opposite, the opposing relationship there was picked up by word to vec. Um, finally, um, monkey is to human as dinosaur is to what? Um, it returned fossil, fossilized, ice age mammals, fossilization. Um, ice age mammals uh, succeeded dinosaurs, so I guess that makes sense because um, humans succeeded monkeys. But um, the fossil relationship is interesting because it's sort of understanding humans as fossilized monkeys, um, which is also like not unreasonable. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> so um, the, in terms of like the uh, sources, here, here they are. You can consult them if you want to get more in depth on like how the vectors are actually embedded. Um, there are some really good resources here. Um, and really, the main takeaway is that cow plus personal trainer equals horse. <laughs> cool. Thank you. <laughs>